Hello biochemistry students. Today we're going to take a look at the basic structure of an amino acid and what makes it polar, nonpolar, what makes it acidic or, or basic. And so this right here is the general structure of an amino acid where we have a nitrogen on this side here, a carboxylic acid on the other side here, and then we would have the rest of the molecule. Whatever is attached up here is what makes each of the, each of the amino acids unique or different. Now, in some textbooks, they will draw this R group or, or this, this tail going up, and in some textbooks, it, they'll draw it going down. And it doesn't really matter, it's the same thing. Also, some textbooks will draw this differently depending on the pH. So depending on the pH, this carboxylic acid group here might lose a hydrogen, and then that hydrogen would be added over here. And so they might also make it look like this. Okay, and it's, it's really the same thing, just sometimes people draw it a little bit differently, and that's not anything we need to get hung up on. Okay, now we're going to start out with what makes an amino acid nonpolar. Okay, so I'm just going to say nonpolar amino acid. Okay, now what makes an amino acid nonpolar is going to be what's attached up here. We need something that's nonpolar attached up there. So really what we're looking for is the absence of strongly electronegative elements. So if we have something like a CH3, carbon is not strongly electronegative, and so this would be nonpolar. Uh, some other examples of this might be throwing some more. Uh, carbons on there. So if we had something on here like a CH2 and then maybe a benzene ring attached on here like this, okay, like that. Th these are all just carbon atoms and carbon is not strongly electronegative and so we would consider these as nonpolar amino acids. Now in, in your notes and in your textbook they do throw a couple in here that are a little bit kind of iffy, kind of on the borderline, and, and that uh, one of them contains sulfur, so we have a, a CH2, and then uh, a CH2, and then a sulfur, and then another uh, on top of that would be a CH3, okay? And that, that sulfur here has a couple of lone pairs. It's a little bit polar, but well, it's, it's kind of in between, and, and I wish they hadn't have done that because it just kind of confuses things. The other one is, is tryptophan. Tryptophan has a nitrogen in it, but again, nitrogen is electronegative, but is it really polar? They put it with a nonpolar, and I wish they hadn't have done that because it's just it's confusing. So what we're looking for really is just nonpolar elements, uh, non-electronegative uh, elements on that R group would give us a nonpolar amino acid. Okay, so then the next one we're going to take a look here is at polar neutral amino acids. So I'm going to say polar neutral polar neutral amino acid. So that means we have a strongly electronegative element attached up here and neutral that is to say it's not acidic or basic. And so for these ones here, we're looking for strongly electronegative elements. So things like uh, CH2OH, oxygen has a couple of lone pairs that's strongly electronegative, so that makes it polar. It's neutral because this is not an acid or a base. It's not an acid or a base. And, and, and we'll take a look at what acids and base um, groups are going to, going to look like. So another example on here is um, like this, but then we have SH attached, and sulfur has got a couple of lone pairs. It's fairly electronegative, and so we would say it's polar, and it's not an acid or a base. And you might be scratching your head going, well, wait a minute, just before you showed us one that had sulfur on there, why wasn't that polar neutral? Well, that one is kind of a little bit polar. The thing is, is it's kind of a gray, you know, like from here polar to here nonpolar, there's different areas of gray. And again, I wish they hadn't have done that. But if, if you recognize electronegative elements, 
and call it polar, then that's fine with me. Okay, so that's those are our, our polar neutral uh, ones. And then let's see here. Uh, let's do polar acidic and basic. So let's do polar acidic. Polar acidic. And so for this one, what we're looking for is something that has a acidic. And so if we have, say, a CH2, and then a carboxylic acid group. So carbon like this, double bond O, and then OH. Here's a carboxylic acid group that is going to be acidic because it gives off a hydrogen, and it's also polar. It has these electronegative elements, strongly electronegative elements. So it is acidic and it is polar. And so the other example of this one is, is like this, where we just throw in another carbon. So I'm going to go CH2, CH2, and then we have the same carboxylic acid structure up there. Okay, so if we recognize our carboxylic acid must be acidic, and it's also polar. All right, so then the basic ones. So we're looking here for polar basic. Polar basic means that it, it accepts protons. And so for these ones, what we're looking for is nitrogen, because nitrogen can act like a base. That is, those lone pairs can attract hydrogen ions. And so an example of this one here is where we're, we would have some carbon atoms. And I'm going to make like a zigzaggy line here. I'm going to zigzaggy line like this. Okay. And then I'm going to throw on an N. H2, like this, and there'd be a lone pair up there like that. And that lone pair is electronegative, and so it can be attracted to a hydrogen ion, and so that makes this basic. Okay, so a hydrogen ion would be attracted here, would be attracted to this here, like this, and that's what makes it basic, and it's also polar, an electronegative element. So if we look and we see nitrogen in our amino acid side chain like this, think polar, think basic. All right, I think that's it. That, that, that should get you going. Now, you don't have to memorize all of these side chains. There's a bunch of them. But I might ask you, can you identify, is this one polar? Is it nonpolar? Is it acidic? Is it basic? And you should be able to do that.